boys and girls. I'm Mrs. Parker, and I'm welcoming you today to our Bible study. And we remember we talk about the different kinds of prayer that we do. We have the I love you prayer, the I'm thankful prayers, the I'm sorry prayers, and the please prayers. And today we're going to do the special prayer thank you prayer okay and the please prayer together because we're thanking God for keeping us safe and we're asking God to continue to keep us safe all right so get your little animal out and we're going to say our prayer dear God thank you for letting us pray to you about things that are important to us Please continue to keep us safe. Please watch over us and our families and our church people, the people that we love, that we come to church with on Sundays. Thank you for our church staff who is continuing to work and help us. Thank you for all the boys and girls who are watching and their mommies and daddies and their brothers and sisters. Continue to watch over us and keep us safe. In your name we pray. Amen. There we go. And we'll put our little bear over here. All right. We have some Bible truths that we always talk about every Sunday. So one of those is where did you learn how to love and obey God? And of course, that's from the Bible. All right. Where is God? God's everywhere. Everywhere we look, everything that we see, God is always there. Can you see God? No, you can't see him, but you know he's always there because he sees you. Does God know all things? Yes. Nothing is hidden from God. All right, do you remember we talked about the seven seeds? The first seed tells us about creation. Who created everything? God created everything. The second seed is about corruption. What came into God's perfect creation and corrupted it? Sin came in. Remember the story Miss Amy told you about Eve and Adam and in the garden and how they ate of the fruit that God told them not to eat? And because of that, we have sinned. God created the, everything perfect and everything very good, and he put Adam and Eve in the garden, but they sinned. So we have to learn about another seed today, and that word is catastrophe. And I'm going to show you a special sign, and I hope I get it right. I've been practicing, so you need to practice too, okay? You start off with your right hand here and your left hand here. The left hand palm is up and the right hand palm is out. And then you rotate them and you make a sad face because the catastrophe is a bad thing. It's a bad thing that happened in the world. All right? So you, how many of you have seen thunder and lightning? Well, we're going to talk about a storm and we have storms all the time in Florida we have storms and it thunders and it lightens and sometimes we use, lose our power we don't have electricity and a long time ago there was a big catastrophe and it started out with lots of thunder and lightning but Somebody was in control, and that was God. God is always in control of everything. God is in control. Even the huge storm that caused the flood of water that co covered the whole world and killed almost everything on earth. God had a reason for that catastrophe. The Bible says that God looked at the earth, and he saw that the people were evil show you a picture. P 
people were evil. Do you see Noah? Noah has that sad face, doesn't he? The catastrophe face. He's very sad because God has told him what's going to happen. But look at the men in the chart. They're mean. They look like they stole something. They have a knife and they have something that they stole. They're very mean people. And they didn't love and obey God. And they were always sinning against God. They were stealing and killing people that were not good people. So anyway, sin makes God very sad. And he knew that what was in the heart of these people, that they were very bad people. And he was sorry that he had made them because they were so full of sin. God has to punish sin because he is holy and just. He's going to send a catastrophe that would destroy everyone and everything on the earth, all the people and all the animals. He was going to wipe out everything because of sin and wickedness. That's pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah, it sounds terrible. There was someone who lived through this catastrophe. Let's look and see who that was. And Miss Parker forgot her Bible again, so let me go get our Bible. We're going to read Genesis 6 8. If you're watching, you can get your Bible and you can look up Genesis 6 8 while I get my Bible, okay? Now we know that this is the first book of the Bible. Remember, it tells us all about God's creation. But 6 8 says, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is Noah. Noah was a righteous man. He did what God asked him to do, and he found favor. And this is Noah in this picture. Noah is very upset with what's happening in his world. He doesn't like it. <clears throat> so Noah prayed to God about what was happening. But Noah and Noah found favor with God. All right, so let's see a little mercy that God had. Why did God have to destroy the world? Because of sin. God was going to punish the sin on the earth, and a huge storm and a great big flood of water was how he was going to do it. It was going to be a great catastrophe. Can you say catastrophe? But because Noah loved and obeyed God, God showed him mercy and promised to save him from the punishment that was going to destroy the earth. In order for Noah to be safe from the flood, he had to obey. And God gave him a very big job. And let's listen to what the job was. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. Pitch is something that we keep it from letting the water in when the floods came. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark is 300 cubits. Its breadth is 50 cubits, and it, its height is 30 cubits. All right, so he told Noah to make an ark. And I have an ark to show you. This is an ark that my son sent me from South Africa. As you can see, there is a place for the animals to come in. They would have had steps, and there would have been a door. And listen to what God talks to Noah about. He was told to build the ark for himself, a huge boat or a ship, as you can see. God told Noah to bring his wife and his sons and their wives onto the ark. God made a way for Noah to be saved from the punishment he would bring on the world. Catastrophe was coming. But what if Noah built the ark and just stood outside the ark? Would that keep him safe from the water? No, of course not. What would Noah have to do to be saved from the flood? He had to get on the ark. He had to go into the ark. Noah and his family would go through the door and then... God would close the door, and God would seal the door, and he would save them from the catastrophe. All right? After all this happened, Noah built the ark. And people may 
made fun of Noah because he built an ark. But pretty soon it got very stormy. Remember I told you that it was going to be very stormy? And it got very stormy. And it started Parker's having trouble. Forgot my easel. It got very stormy and it started to rain and it had thunder and lightning. And the water came up and it came up and it came up. And pretty soon the people that were there, they didn't have any place to go. The animals didn't have any place to go. The trees were covered. Everything was covered. But Noah and his family and all the animals that God had told him to save were on the ark. And they were floating on the water. So this is the catastrophe that God told us about. God said, I'm going to close the door. Okay? And they went through the door of the ark. Our memory verse, remember our memory verse? We're going to say it together. Miss Parker's going to hold this one in front of her. Can you see it? I am the door. If he will be saved, and no, I, I'm sorry, I read it wrong. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pastures. John, John 10, 9. All right, let's read it again. I am the door. If he will be... Any, I am the door. I need to start over because I messed it up, didn't I? Let's read it again. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pastures. John 10, 9. What did Jesus call himself? He's the door. <clears throat> he said, I am the door. And if anyone enters by him, he will be saved. Just like God showed mercy to Noah, God has always shown mercy to us. He made a way for Noah to walk through the door of the ark and be saved from the flood. He makes a way for us to be saved from the punishment of sin. When we put our trust in Jesus and believe in him, it's like we're walking through the door to be saved. All right, that's our memory verse, and we're going to be covering that memory verse for the rest of the time. All right, now we're going to say our prayer. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, it's raining today. It's a Thursday, and it's raining. But we know that God will not destroy us again with a flood. That's a promise he made. So it may rain, but it's never going to be a catastrophe for us because he will not destroy the earth again. All right, we're going to pray and thank God for his mercy that saved Noah and that saves each of us. So let's bow our head, close our eyes. If you've got your little prayer animal, you can get your little prayer animal again. Thank you, God, for your mercy that saved Noah when he obeyed your commands. We pray that you will help the children obey him. I know this is a very hard time for them, God, but they need to know that they need to obey their mommies and daddies and do what is right. Thank you for letting us know that we will be back together again and that we can praise you even stronger for making us healthy during this time. Thank you for all our boys and girls that are work, work, watching today. In your name we pray, amen.